Hey everybody, welcome to Fit, um, Bad Fit Friday. Uh, I'm a little thrown off today because it's actually snowing on the 30th of October in Connecticut, so it's a little bit of a weird weather day. Um, but it was a perfect day for me to stay inside and get a lot of stuff done. Um, I just want to start by reminding everybody that next week I'm starting the bathrobe sew along and I'm using um, my new bathrobe pattern. I'm calling it Mom's House Coat. And the reason why I named it Mom's House Coat is because this pattern started out as a copy of my mom's favorite bathrobe. And I cut it apart and made it into a pattern. And then after watching it, I mean, I'm trying it on her and watching her wear it over the past almost year, I've made some changes to the pattern, um, and then I graded it and created a pattern to sell. And, as it turns out, my mom needs another bathrobe, so I'm going to be making a bathrobe along um, with you during this sew-along. You can see here, this is the bathrobe. And I did some embroidered buttonholes on it which came out really nice. All I have left to do actually is sew the buttons on. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. But um, certainly if you're interested in making this lovely bathrobe either for yourself or as a holiday gift, um, that's what we'll be doing next Friday for FabFit Friday. So today what I want to do is I want to share my adventure in single welt pockets with you. Um, I'm teaching pants fitting for Master of the Art of Sewing, and it's a Thursday night class, and I've been working on a lot of different um, techniques and things to show um, different pocket ideas, different waistband ideas, so on and so forth. So basically, last night I shared some, well, pocket ideas, and I want to um, share them with you as well, because I think they're very cool, and I came up with two different versions. One version is perfect for a lined garment, and then the other version is more suited for pants, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. Let me just um, let me just switch my view to my picture in picture. Ooh, that's a little bright. Let me fix that. Okay, so what I have here are two different welt pockets, and actually from, I'm just going to put them next to each other, from the right side, they are actually um, identical, oops, hold on one second, these are the ones I want to show you, not these, okay, sorry, um, alright, so from the right side, you can see they're actually identical. Okay, so here's one. Um, it has a single welt. Okay. And then here's the second one. Oops. This one shows... Oh, no, actually. Okay, they look exactly the same, but when I flip them over, you're going to see the difference. Hi, Nygund. Oh, Nilgund and Diane. Thank you for joining me. Um, all right, so if we look at the back of these welt pockets, you can see this one has a shaped pocket bag, sort of a rounded, um, a rounded bottom. It has a separate pocket lining and pocket bag. And the thing about this one is the seam allowances, the raw seam allowances show here. Now, if you wanted to do this style for pants, you could, um, try to get in there and finish it on the serger maybe, but um, that might be a little bit snug because it's a very narrow seam allowance and it's raw. So I think this version would be better for a lined garment because then you wouldn't have to worry about your raw edges. And then this version, when I flip it over, 
you can see it's got a, a, a welt piece and it's sewn directly to the pocket bag, which is all one piece and it folds back up. And the thing I like about this technique is it's a lot less fussy and you can actually do it two different ways. Um, let me just stop and say hi to everybody. Hi Janie, hi PG, hi Mary. Um, thank you guys for joining me. Mary was walking her fur baby. My fur baby, my baby fur baby, Sophie, actually um, we're breeding her, so maybe she has puppies. I'll keep you posted on that. It's going to be very exciting. We'll find out the day before Thanksgiving if she's going to have puppies. So that's my little fur baby update. Um, all right, so getting back to this, the reason why this is so cool is because, first of all, it's a very clean finish for the inside of your pants. So if you pretend this is your waistline edge um, and this is your back leg or whatever leg you're putting your welt pocket, it's a nice clean finish. And from the right side, notice it's still showing the pants fabric. And that's because you can do it two different ways. So for, for this version, if I wanted the pants fabric to show, I would fold down the upper part of the welt fabric. And what I would do is I would sew through just the pocket lining fabric and this part of the welt. I would just finish that with the serger and maybe just zigzag or top stitch it on so it stays put. And then you've got sort of a, you know, you're hiding your, your pocket bag fabric. Or if you want the pocket bag fabric to show, which is, you know, can be very cool, you would flip up this piece and when you turn it around, you're getting the view of your lining or your pocket bag. So that's, um, that's gives you two options for this view. So I thought what I would do is just show you how to sew both of these versions. They're very similar, um, but then you can see for yourself, you know, what you'd like to do. Um, Let's start with the fussier version. I'm gonna start with the one that has raw edges on the inside. Now, the thing about this version is you have to plan a little bit ahead because you need to cut your welt. This is your welt piece. You need to cut it the width of your opening plus your seam allowances. So I cut this um, an inch and a an inch and a quarter, uh, an inch and three quarters, because I'm going to have. I'm sorry, you have to cut it the width of your opening times two, because you're going to be folding it in half. So once you fold it in half like this, that that's how it becomes your welt. But then you also need your seam allowances. So I'm going to be making an opening that's about a half an inch wide. So I've got the inch for my folded welt, plus I have my two seam allowances down here. Okay, so that's, and, and actually, technically I should have cut it at an inch and a half because I'm gonna do quarter inch seam allowances, but from practicing, it's good to have a little extra. So I actually gave myself a bonus quarter inch. So the total calculation for this is double the width of your opening, plus your seam allowances, plus if you want a little wiggle room, add another quarter. So for an inch, for a half an inch opening, I have a one and three quarter inch um, welt width. Um, let me just check in. Hi, Judy. Oh, Judy says, good morning, good ideas. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm really, I don't know. I've struggled with welts for a long time and I kind of avoided them when I was making pants. And then I had my two my double welt pocket that I like that I actually make the welts out of the um, the lining fabric that I showed last week. So I wanted to really make some easy single welts because I think those are classic for jackets and pants. So I'm kind of excited. I'm really excited to share this with you guys. All right, so we've got the width of our welt. Then we need our pocket pieces. Now you'll notice my my pocket lining, which is a little bit shorter, 
um, it's short, shorter by the width of the opening of the window where the weld's going to go. So my lining is a half an inch shorter than my pocket bag here. Okay, so those are the pieces you need to cut out and have ready. And then we're going to pretend this is, this is going to be our pretend leg. Okay, so the first step to this version is we want to draw a guideline to sew the opening for the welt. Now usually, um, like if I were making pants, I'd want it to be, you know, about an inch from the, the where the waistband's sewn on, um, or, you know, just plan where you draw on your garment is where your well is going to be. So you want to plan the position of your well, and then I'm just going to use a pen for this. I'm going to just draw a guideline that goes straight across here just to get, get us going. Then you need to decide how wide your opening is going to be. So if we look at my welt, okay, my welt is seven inches. So the opening needs to be less than that. So this is why you really need to plan all these things out in advance. I'm going to give myself an inch on each side to finish the ends of my opening. So I'm going to create a five inch opening and I'm just going to kind of center it here and I'm going to put a dot and a dot there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself this is these these dots that I drew, that's where I'm going to cut after I sew the welt in the pocket bag on. So I need another set of guides to clip to, and those are going to be a quarter inch away. So I'm just going to, to make my second guides a quarter inch away. And actually, I'm going to create these outer guidelines also have to go on the welt. So if I measure that, that's five and a half inches. So I'm going to make guidelines on my welt that are five and a half inches. So if my piece is seven and I'm doing five and a half, so that's three quarters of an inch away from each edge just to make it easy. I'm just going to make a guideline there and a guideline there. Okay, so you can see here that the guideline on my welt matches the guidelines on my that I drew on my garment. And then we have to draw the same guidelines on the pocket bag as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay this here. So everything's even. And I'm gonna just I'm just gonna transfer them over to this piece like this. So everything is nice and even. Okay, I've got my guidelines. And actually you want to put the guidelines on the wrong side of your fabric because we're going to put these right sides together with the pants. So we're pretending this is our garment. I'm just gonna write down here garment. Okay. And this is the right side up. This is the right side. Okay, then we're going to position our welt so that it is right sides together. And the other thing is I've already um, interfaced the wrong side. So actually, I drew my guidelines on the wrong side. You want it right sides together. So let me just transfer these over. I'm sorry. Okay, and then we've got our... Um, our pocket bag goes on top of the line and our welt goes on the bottom of the line. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin that with my pins. Okay, so I'm just going to pin it so that the edges are butted, butted right up next to each other and they're also like centered on that line. So if I take one, one away, you can see I'm lining it right up with my guideline here. And I'm just going to um, 
I am going to put a pin there and I'm going to put a pin here. Okay, and then I'm going to pin my welt underneath it and I'm going to butt the edges right up next to each other like this. Okay. All right, so that's ready to go now. So now I'm going to get my sewing machine up here and we're going to sew. this bad boy. All right. Just plug this in. Okay, so the one thing we want to do here is we need to use a foot that we can see what we're doing because um, it's very important when we do these welts that the lines that we stitch are exactly the same length. So I'm just going to put on my, my clear foot so I can see. Another good option would be the zipper foot. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to switch this foot out for this clear one. I think I'll be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. Actually, I would love my open toe foot, but I did not look. Oh, wait a minute. Ha. Huh. Open toe would even be better. Let me switch. You really need to see how, where you're starting and stopping, and I'll show you that right now. All right, so I've got my, I've got my, my pocket pieces. What I'm gonna do is I need to stitch a quarter inch away, and actually, just to make that an easy thing to accomplish, I'm just gonna draw a guideline here. Um, you can also use the side of your presser foot. I'm just going to draw a line. That way I won't have to worry about using my quarter inch foot. Or, you know, I just want to make sure I, it's nice and even. So this will make it easier for you to see. Okay. So I'm going to start stitching on this line. And the most important thing is you want your needle to start right in the guideline that you drew marking that the length of the opening. So I'm also going to make my stitch length a little bit smaller, like two millimeters long, because a smaller stitch length is easier to control the, you know, where it starts and stops. So I'm going to take a couple stitches forward. And then I'm going to take a couple stitches back to, to secure it. And then I'm just going to stitch on this line. Now when I get to the other side, I'm going to hand walk it so I don't overshoot it. And then as soon as I get to the end that mark, I'm going to press the reverse and I'm going to back tack a couple. Okay. And then I'm going to move it over and I'm going to do my other line of stitching. Now here's where, again, I want to make sure my needle is going right into that mark. So it's exactly even with my other line or my first line I stitched. Back tack. And then OK, 
Okay, and again, I'm going to hand walk it. And then as I get that last stitch, I'm going to back it up a little bit. All right. Oops. I'll just use my... Okay, let me push this out of the way. Let me show you what we have. Okay, so you can see I've sewn on both of my lines. And from the wrong side, I can look and see if those stitching lines are even with each other. Because this is what's one of the really important things. So if I take my ruler and just hold it there, I can see that those are lining right up on both sides. So I'm happy with that. If one of your lines of stitching is a different um, length, you can go in and fix it. So like you can add a little bit, you know, take another stitch or two on the shorter one. It's really important that these are even with each other. All right, so then your next step is, I am going to take these pins out. Let me just stop and say hi. Hi, Sonia. Thank you for joining me. Um, all right, so I'm going to take these pins out. And I'm just going to use my rotary cutter. We want to cut on this line that I drew on the actual garment here. But we are only going to cut from where I made that dot. Because remember, it's a little bit shorter. It's a quarter inch shorter. Okay, there's my dot. All right, so we're only going to cut from dot to dot. And to get it started, I'm just going to use my rotary cutter to make a slit. You know, and then I can use my scissors to cut right on the line and I can see through you know but between my two my welt and my pocket bag here so I'm literally just cutting to the dot and to the dot on this side all right so see now I have an opening all right so from the wrong side what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these threads. I am going to fold the end of my welt out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to fold these down because I don't want to cut them. And I am going to just put my scissors in here and I'm going to cut to the top of the stitching. Right, so we're not cutting anything except the garment fabric, and I want to cut right to the end of that stitching, and I want to do it on all four ends. So there's one there. One there. See, and it makes like that little V. Okay. I'm going to do it on the other side. This is one of the things that will really help you get a nice crisp edge. Is if you can clip right to the end of your stitching and your stitching is even. Alright, so there's my ends, my little V's. Now I'm going to get my iron up here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to put push our fabric through the opening. Front. So this is the right side, so we're going to push it through to the wrong side, like this. And I'm going to get my welt up here, you know, through the opening. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press the seam allowances of the welt open. That just gives it a nice crisp edge. Okay. So that's open. And then I can press that down, like finger press it down. 
Um, and then the other thing is I want to fold my little my little points or my little V's need to come out. So while I can see them right here, um, let's see where are my little tweezers. Okay, so I can, this is right here, see my little V? That's going to have to be pressed to the wrong side, so I'm just going to give it in like in a little initial pressing there. And then let me flip it around and do this one. Okay, so you can see we're starting to create a nice opening here for our welt. So I just want to give that a nice, that little V, a nice little press. Um, let's turn it to the right side and see how our window is looking. You can see our window is looking pretty nice. So I'm just going to give the top of this a little press here. All right, and then the next step is to create the welt from the wrong side. What you're going to do is you're going to fold the welt. And actually, I'm going to press my seam allowances down now so they're flat. Oops. And then I'm going to fold my welt down so that the top of the fold is even with the top of the opening. So it looks like that. We'll give it a nice crisp edge. All right, let's look at it from the right side. All right, so see, got that nice, um, well in there now and I have little threads where I clips poking through but what I'm gonna do we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna do two things the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna sew the pocket bag on next let me see if I can just get rid of my picture-in-picture there, that way I don't have to readjust. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pocket bag. Deal with that. Oh. All right, I lost my pocket bag. How could that possibly be? What did I do with my... under my sewing machine. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to, let me just, let me just stop here. Um, um, Nilgun says, I'm planning to sew a shopping bag for my sister and I'm going to make a welt pocket big enough for a cell phone in the back of the bag. That's an excellent idea. Oh, <laughs> Samina, thank you for telling me. I found it. Okay. Thank you, ladies, for keeping an eye on my pocket bag. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right. So here is what we have now. Okay. So here's my folded. This is my welt. Okay. We're going to take the um, pocket bag, and I'm going to put it, like, right sides together. And I'm actually going to just sew it to the end of the welt here. So let me just do that. That way it will be sewn on, and I won't lose it again. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance here. Okay. Right, technically, my stitch length doesn't need to be so short anymore, so I'm going to put it up to three. Okay. Okay. All right. And then what I'm going to do is, let me see if I can show you here. I'm going to lay this, I'm going to pull this down now so it's laying flat like this. Okay. 
And then if I put the other part down as well, you can see that the pocket bags match up. And um, if it's a little bit long, you can trim that. Um, but those are going to be ready to sew. The next step is we want to go, I'm going to turn this so my pocket is face up. And I'm going to fold this back on itself like this. And what we're looking for here now is that little V. Do you see that right there? Part of making a nice crisp end to a welt is to sew this V down really flat. So I'm going to grab it with my tweezers and I am going to hold it flat as I put my presser foot down on it. Okay, and I'm just going to stitch that down through all the layers. Be careful not to sew on the actual garment. You're only sewing the V. Okay, and then let me do the other side here. So I'm just going to flip the garment out of the way so we can see the little, the little um, V right here. And again, I'm just going to give it a little tug so we want it to be nice and flat. I'm going to stitch that down. All right, so let's look at our corners now. Okay, you can see, I think I I might have clipped a tad too close because I'm getting these little hairy things, but I can tuck those in and dot it with fray check if I need to. But for the most part, I'm really happy with the way that looks. And it was pretty easy to do. Um, now, let's look at the back. Okay, you can see you've got those seam allowances there. Okay, so that's the downfall of, well, not the downfall, but that's this version. Really, you need to have some sort of lining under there to protect it. But just to finish, um, just to finish the pocket, I'm going to go from the right side again, and I'm going to fold the pocket out of the way, and we're just going to sew it. Okay, and then remember, it's a little bit, sh the, the, the lining is a little bit longer here, so I'm going to go in um, just a little bit deeper. Again, I'm just going to fold this out of the way. Oops. Don't let anything fold over on itself. All right, so that completes the pocket. Okay, so I sewed it. I would trim this to match down here. Um, all right, so that's version one. Okay, let me show you version two. Um, Mary says, um, would it be helpful to make those little triangles three-eighths or a half an inch? I mean, you could, as long as you can grab it, um, you know, that's, you know, I think that's, that's big enough. The real issue becomes how you clipped, okay, because you can see here, um, right here, where it's fraying a little bit. I could actually go in with my fray check. Let me see if I can un. Just, let me just get a pin here. I'm just gonna. I didn't get my um, nail polish bottles. Mary uses nail polish bottles for her fray check, so she can just brush on her fray check. I didn't do that yet. Let me use this one. So if you put a little fray check right on the insides of those corners like that, that will also keep that from fraying. So right in the corners there. Okay, 
Um, but anyway, but that's that's version one. Okay, and then to do version two, let me show you version two. Version two is um, this is the one I would use for an unlined garment. And the first step is we're going to take our pocket bag, and it's all one piece. So you want to make it as long as you want your pocket to be when it's folded, basically. Okay, the welt's going to add a little bit more length to it, but um, you can always trim the length of your, uh, your pocket bag before you fold it up in the end. But basically our first step is we're going to sew it directly, we're going to sew our welt directly to our um, pocket bag. So let me show you that. And I'm just going to use the side of my presser foot as a guide here for a seam allowance. All right. All right, so then I'm going to press the seam allowance towards the pocket bag. So let's just do that quick. So it's just going to get pressed down like that. And actually it wanted to go that way, so that was pretty easy. All right, so there's our piece ready to go in terms of constructing it. The next step is we are actually going to draw on the wrong side of the welt. So if you're making pants, what you want to do is you want to plan um, the distance. So if this was the waistline edge or the waistband, you know, the top edge of the pant leg, and you wanted your welt to be, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half from the top, you could trim your welt to match. Okay, so you can get it where you want it to be by, you know, just measuring down. So I'm sticking it up above my pants a little bit here. It's it's wider than I would do for pants. Um, but I'm gonna, actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave it down there because we need room for the in the bottom to actually make the weld. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have it up a little bit. And I'm gonna measure down an inch and a half from the top of my pant leg like that. And I'm just going to draw a line across here for to start. Then I'm going to make my second line 3 eighths of an inch away. Like that. Okay, so that's going to be the width of my opening. Then I need to make my ends. And I want to give myself, you know, a good amount of uh, allowance on the side. So we'll go 3 quarters of an inch in. So that's one thing you have to figure in your planning, how wide you make your welt versus how wide you make your opening. All right, and then, you know, if it helps you to visualize, you could draw you know, your center line and you could make little Vs to cut. The, the, the steps are gonna be exactly the same now, it's just for this version, we're drawing everything on the wrong side of the welt. Um, all right, so uh, Mary says, I use fingernail polish type containers with fray check because the tube is nasty to work with. It is nasty. And I am going to get some. I just haven't had a chance. So let's just review before we go to the sewing machine. We're drawing our opening on the wrong side of the welt piece. Keeping in mind, once we sew it, we're going to cut through onto your garment. So you want to make sure that you position this on your garment where you want your hole, your opening to be. So now I'm going to drag my sewing machine back over here. Oh, first let me just put a, a couple. I'm just going to do two pins. Like this. Just to hold it. Okay, then I'm going to bring my sewing machine back in here, and I'm going to sew on my lines again, 
making sure that I'm starting right at that vertical ends, you know, the vertical ends of my little rectangle here. And I'm gonna bring my stitch length back down to two. Again, when I get to the end, I'm just going to hand walk it because so I do not want to overshoot my end. You know, and I find if you, um, as you're sewing, I'll explain it when I go down this side. So again, let me get my needle right where I want it to be, and I'm going to take two stitches forward two stitches back okay and okay when I get down here and I'm hand walking it when the needle is gonna come down on that before the needle starts to come down on that last stitch I'm gonna re, I'm gonna press my reverse button because it's gonna go forward to finish that stitch then it will go backwards so that's a tip to keep you from overshooting the end point um, of your seam. All right, so again, we are going to cut this, but because I don't have my welt and my pocket bag in, in the way, I can use my rotary cutter to cut the straight part, you know, to my little Vs here. And then I'm going to cut from there to the end of my stitching. The tips of my scissors are a little bit dull, so I'm going to cut it like this. Okay. I'm going to do the other side. And this side. Okay. All right, I think that's going to be good. Now I'm going to take out the pins and I'm going to turn my all of my pocket through the hole to the wrong side. And yes, there will be pressing involved. So I'm going to, basically, I'm going to do exactly what I did on the first version. I'm going to press the seam allowance open. Okay, so this seam allowance right here, I would like it to have a nice crisp edge, so I'm going to press it open first. I've got a lot of stuff going on here, so I don't want to squish anything, but I also want to press it open, so. All right, let's see. Okay. Right, then I can have it lay flat. And we really want to check our um, the shape of our window. And I want to show you something. If, you're, if your corner is looking like this, not nice, and it looks grabby there, that means we didn't clip close enough to the stitching. So I'm going to go back in and clip that side a little bit farther. Because if it's not all the way, then it doesn't create a nice point. So I'm going to go in a little bit farther. And it really could just be like a little th thread width. It's a very small, you know, there's a very small distance between getting it right and not getting it far enough. So see, that looks better. Let's see this side. I think I can 
work with this side. All right, so now that I'm, I'm happy with the way I cut, I'm going to just sort of create my opening. And to get a nice crisp edge on the top of my window, I'm going to press this seam allowance open as well. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to press it flat. side is still a little bit funky. Let me see. Yeah, I can physically see the, the distance from where I clipped to where my stitch is there. So I'm going to try to clip that a little bit farther. Let me see. To release that. Okay, I think that'll be okay now. I don't want to fuss with it too much because I'll cut too far and then I'll be sad. Um, all right, so let's just turn it to this way now. Okay, so everything is laying pretty flat. I think. All right, so then to create the well on this one, you're going to do the same thing where you're going to fold it up to the top of the window and it creates the welt like this. Okay, let's see how that looks. Oops. That does not look lovely. Hold on. You always want to check it from the right side to make sure everything is hanging right. And that is not. So let me just see here. So I'm going to fold it up. And then, oh, let me press these down first, that's why. Once you open your seam allowances, it's always a good idea to press them flat again, because otherwise it could make it funky. Then let's fold it back down. Here we go. I'm going to show you all the things to do plus all the things not to do. All right, let's look at this now. Oh, much better. Okay. All right, let me see if there's questions. Um, um, Mary's asking why um, why not sew a rectangle instead of the two lines? Um, you totally could sew the rectangle. It's just sometimes getting around the corner. Um, if your corner is funky, like when you go to sew a rectangle, when you go to pivot, if that's not exactly even and your corners can be funked up, then it may funk up the corner after you clip it. So making sure the lines are exactly the same length eliminates the need to do a good pivot on the rectangle. So that's why I don't stitch on the, um, the rectangle. But you totally could do a rectangle. So if you've learned that way and you like to do a rectangle when you're stitching, and what we're talking about um, when we make the opening when I stitched it in the beginning, you totally could stitch around. It's just it's one less thing to worry about not to pivot on the corners. Um, you can see, uh, let me just see here. Okay, and then Milgrip Gund asks, do you recommend understitching? Um, I, I think 
as long as you press open and then press down, I don't think you need to understitch. You can see none of the welt fabric is showing from the right side. You know, it makes a nice crisp edge. So when you press it, you know, make sure you can see the roll of your, um, oops, I'm showing you and I'm not showing you. You know, make sure you can see the roll of your, your garment fabric from the inside, that little bit, and then it won't show on the right side. So anyway, so that's how that looks. Um, and then to finish it, again, you have the choice of folding this down if you didn't want your pocket lining to show, or I'm just going to leave it like this. You press it up like this once everything's in position. You press everything up, okay, and then you would finish the pocket bag, okay, and you would sew the sides just like I sewed the first pocket bag. Um, one other thing you can do, if you're going to leave this piece up, you can add one more row of stitching through both seam allowances and the top part of the welt. You can stitch those together to hold that. Um, for an added measure of security. Okay, so you just stitch right across there and you're stitching through the just the welt and the seam allowances. Okay, and then you would fold this up. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, just like the other version, we have to sew down our um, points. So you would sew down your points. So I might as well just finish it up for you really quick. Let me get my sewing machine back in here. All right, and let me just get rid of my picture and picture so you can see. Oops. Okay, so again, I'm going to put this right side up, and I'm going to do my welts. My little, not my welts, my little fees. Okay. That's the first step. And you really want to make sure they're laying flat. So if they're not, just grab them. And make sure they're laying flat. Okay. And then let me do this side. And then this is what I was talking about here. If you want to just support the top of the window, fold down this piece and just stitch right here, and that will keep it, you know, it'll secure the top of the window, just keep everything together. And again, for these steps, I don't need to have such a short stitch length. Okay. So that just looks like that. And then to finish it, I am just going to fold this up into position. And again, you know, I would give it a press, but again, you're going to put it from the bottom of the pocket bag, fold your garment out of the way, and just stitch up from the fold. not behaving. Okay, and then we'll do it from the side. And actually
actually, so this side I will go like this. I'll just fold my pants out of the way this way. Start from the bottom. Make sure your garment's out of the way. Okay, so here is our completed pocket. Okay, obviously you'd want to serge the edge of this and this so it doesn't fray, but basically that's your completed pocket. And with this version, the blue, I mean the uh, gingham shows. So that would be my version of a really easy way to make a single welt for pants. Okay, so we've got this version and we've got Where's the other one I did? Oh, here it is. All right, so again, remember, they almost look identical from the right side. Okay, so it really just depends on what you're gonna use your welt pocket. All right, so that's my fun little welt pocket tutorial for today. Um, if you're joining me for the bathrobe sew along, I want you to know that I just added a PDF version of the pattern um, if you want to join me and use um, mom's house coat pattern um, that is available. I'll put a link um, in the description below to get that. So next week we're going to start with the bathrobe sew along. Um, if you have any questions or comments about that, post those. If you have any questions or comments about um, making a single welt pocket, please let me know about those as well and I will help you. I hope you enjoyed this um, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you on Tuesday for another Fit Tip Tuesday. All right, so have a nice weekend, stay safe, and I will see you next week. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Um, Gilapi asks, is the bathroom pattern available in the UK? Um, yes, if you want to pay for my shipping to the UK, you can do that, but you can also download the PDF and tape it together. I do my PDF so they're layered, so you can shut off sizes you don't need, and there's a half an inch, seam a half an inch allowance around each page, so it will work for the A2 paper size as well as the US paper size. And right now, through the beginning of the sew along, it's on sale, so the... PDF version is only $7.99. Um, it's $2 off, and the printed version is on sale for $12.99. So both of those versions are in my shop, and I will put links to, um, to those in the description below, or you can just go to my shop. I think there's a, a link there already, but I'll put specific links after I get off. But I hope you guys join me. It's going to be really fun. I can tell you my mom loves her bathrobe and she's very excited to get um, another one. And actually I ordered fabric from L.A. Finch Fabrics. It's a um, medium to heavy weight striped knit that I'm going to use for her second bathrobe. So um, it's going to be lots of fun and I hope you'll join me for that. And if you don't want to make a bathrobe and you want to just check out the process, you can do that too. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you, um, next week. Have a great weekend.